welcome to the welcome to the session so in this particular video we will talk about another amazing interview question right this question is asked so frequently in amazon company so i want to i want to discuss this question in very much detail starting from what are the different kinds of approaches that we have to solve this problem and afterwards we will talk about the implementation of the same i hope that you all are excited with me so let's get started so what this problem says first of all try to understand the definition of this majority element okay so for example here we will be having an array which is given to me maybe the array name is nums okay and it contains some elements like 2 2 1 1 1 and 2 okay like this so how many number of elements do i have so if i will talk about the index number it is 0 1 2 uh 3 4 5 and 6 so in total we will be having seven number of elements here correct everyone so i am having seven number of elements the element which is having a frequency which is having a frequency greater than frequency i would say greater than the n by 2 that element is something which you will call it as a majority element that element is something which you will call it as a majority element for example if you will count the frequency of this 2 it is 4 and what is the value of n by 2 it is 3 so i can say clearly 4 which is the frequency of 2 is greater than the value of 7 by 2 which is equals to 3 i am taking the lower bound of that right so because the frequency of an element which is specifically 2 in our case in our example is greater than n by 2 that's why i am calling it as a majority element so my output should be in this particular case the output should be equals to 2 here perfect so given the array we will be able to get the output and we will be clearly able to understand the definition as well i hope it is pretty much clear to everyone now one approach uh, which is coming which can might come to you know in your head is that you can say that why not to sort this array first of all what i will do is that in approach number 1 you can say to me that what i can do is i will try to sort the array first which will obviously take an optimized time complexity as n log n right and after that you can say that after sorting the array i'll try to just count the number of elements which is having a maximum frequency and i'll just return that so you will be able to get the data like 1 1 1 1 and then 2 2 2 and 2 after sorting so you will be clearly able to see that the number of elements that we have is 4 here so you can uh, which is greater than the value of n by 2 so you can just directly print the value as 2 but here if you will observe the overall time complexity required in your approach number 1 is can i say it will be n log n right how can i optimize this time complexity the approach number 2 which can come in maximum students is that why not to apply a hash based data structure hash based data structure which in specifically python we can call it as a dictionary where what we will try to do is that we will try to take a key value pair this is what we call the, call it as a dictionary where the key value pair is there where key is the unique elements that i have for example in our case we will be having two and value is the count of that particular a uh, key so this is four and similarly here the unique key is one and the count is three now which server is having a higher count value so here it is 4 and here it is 3 which server is having a higher count value i will try to print the corresponding key so here because 4 is having a higher count value so i will just try try to bring the output as 2 here i will say it's fine it's 
completely a good approach where you are trying to create a table which you called as hash table right where you are trying to store a data in the form of a key value pair right in the form of a key value pair and what will happen so key is the unique data that you have inside the array and the value is the count of that for example 2 and 1 so the corresponding value will be 4 here and 3 here and whichever is having a higher frequency you are trying to print the key corresponding to that that is fine but here if you will observe what's the time complexity yes you will be able to optimize that because here it will be only big of n which is quite lesser as comparable to the above approach where we have talked about n log n time complexity but here I am using some extra space to store that hash table so the space complexity is something which is equals to I can say also big of n so okay somehow I can say that the approach number two is optimized as comparable to approach number one because I usually say that even though you are you're using some extra space but if you are able to optimize the time complexity is completely fine so approach number two is completely fine and even this question is available in lead code platform if you will go and search for majority element you will be able to get that and if you will try to solve this problem using approach number two your all test cases will get passed also okay so what I will do first I'll try to show you the implementation of this approach number uh, approach number two which I am talking about here because this is you can say one of, one of the optimized approach as well so what I can do I just open my Jupyter notebook here I'll try to write the driver code first where I'll try to take the nums array which will contain the elements like two followed by two followed by one followed by one followed by one followed by two and followed by two now what I can do is that I can just make the result which is equals to majority element that we will be able to get and here we can pass the nums value simply I can print the result by saying uh, majority element in an array is something like this you can print and after that you can pass on the result now let me define the method definition here where what I can do I can define the function called as majority element inside this I am having the nums right now what I can do here is that I can first of all so here in Python you can easily able to create the hash table which contains the unique keys unique uh, data as the key and the frequency as the value by importing the collections so from collections you can directly import the package named counter and you can you can directly call that so I will import counter and I'll directly call that so you can just directly say counts is equals to counter and inside that you can pass the array nums I will print the counts in order to demonstrate you the dictionary how it will be forming the way I am saying right and now what I will do is that I'll just try to return the maximum of what I am getting as the counts dot keys so here it will focus on the corresponding value right and what is the key key is something which is equals to counts dot get if I just try to return this particular function so here it is comma right from collections we need to import the counter now count spelling is wrong let me try to rectify this now here if you will observe what is happening I just try to show you the what this counter will return so here if you will observe this is what I was talking about right in the uh, while explaining in the board that it will take the value key as the unique data that you have which is 2 and the, in the second case it is 1 and value will be the frequency of that which is 4 and here it is equals to 3 so this is the counts value which will return the dictionary of that after that what we are trying to do we are trying to call the directly max function 
and with the help of which it will try to focus on the value corresponding to the keys that we have and whichever is having a higher frequency it will try to simply print that particular key okay this is fine now what we have observed here this is the approach number two right where we have applied the approach of i would say hashing or i would say dictionary based data structure right here we try to solve this particular thing with the help of a dictionary based data structure and because of this our time complexity to solve this problem is big o of n and the space complexity is also equals to big o of n as i am utilizing some external data structure i am creating some dictionary here which is basically storing the key value pair it's making sense right now the question is that can we optimize this code further and the answer is yes there is something very interesting algorithm that we have which i want to actually discuss about in this particular session and that's the major objective here the approach number 3 where i will talk about something called as boyer murray voting algorithm i hope i am pronouncing it correct voting algorithm so basically what this algorithm says let's try to understand the intuition behind that it's pretty much amazing if you will be able to understand that you will for sure uh, will be very much uh, confident afterwards and this particular algorithm is giving us the time complexity as big o of n to find the majority majority element and the space complexity as big o of 1 how so we are getting rid of the extra space that we are utilizing in the above part of the approach number 2 in this particular approach how basically we are trying to do uh, in this particular part so basically what is happening for example here we will be having an array like i'll take the same array maybe we will be having 2 we will be having 2 we will be having 1 1 1 then we will be having 2 and then 2 so basically what we are trying to do here is that this particular algorithm says that try to consider so here we will take the one candidate whose value i will initialize with none and i will take the count value initially as zero now try to understand the algorithm what it says the intuition behind that actually it says that what i will do is that i'll try to consider the very first element in the array i'll apply one for loop so the starting element i'll consider it as a, a candidate who is having a maximum frequency so i'll just update the candidate with 2 and the maximum frequency is now count will be updated with plus 1 now if the next upcoming element that you are getting is equal to the previous candidate that you have so if the next particular element num is equal equal to the candidate that is already present at that point of time you need to increment the count value by plus 1 otherwise in else case you need to decrement the count value by minus 1 now whenever you will be able to reach to a position where the count is equals to 0 at that point of time you need to update the candidate value with a current with the current number that you are having right that is the important thing so basically now let me try to give you the example with the help of which you will be easily able to understand i will move ahead i will check what is the current number here it's 2 this two number is already present as the candidate so what i will do if the number is same i'll just update the count value by 1 so it will be equals to 2 now i will move ahead now the next number is 1 which is not equal to the present candidate that i have so what i will do i'll decrement the count by 1 so it will become 1 but the candidate value will not get updated i will move ahead in this particular case if you will observe again the current num value is 1 which is not equal to the candidate so i will again decrement the value of the count is equals to 0 now when it will reach to 0 what will happen 
what will happen at that point of time your candidate will get updated with one right and again the count will be equals to one now you will move ahead again you will be able to get the one so you will update the value with two again you will move ahead you will get the different value so you will decrement the count again you will move ahead you will get the different value you will decrement again the count is equal to zero so you will just update with the current value of num that you have and update the frequency to one so basically whichever candidate is the last one which is left and if the count value is greater than zero then that candidate will be considered as the majority element now it's not over now you will be able to get the two what you need to do is that you need to first of all check what is the frequency of this two in the complete array that you have it is four whether this count value of four is greater than n by two or not what is the value of n here seven seven by two which is equals to three yes at that point of time you will say that finally i am sure that this is something which is the majority element that i will be able to get here that is the overall intuition behind this particular algorithm right i hope i'm making sense to everyone so here i'll try to demonstrate you one more example for example here we will be having so this is the example number one which i demonstrated here let me try to take one more example and after that i will try to show you the implementation of the same please try to understand this algorithm it's quite interesting so the intuition simply says that whichever is having a majority element the count value of that particular element will be greater than zero always right i don't care that whether this is actual count of the value or not because i don't care about that i what i care is that what is the final candidate which is left and that will be considered as the majority element let me try to demonstrate the same thing with the help of another example and at, after that i i believe that things will get clear and once i will do the implementation everything will get clear to you for example i am taking the array 2 3 4 3 and 3 now this is the array that i have if you will try to observe the number of elements here the number of elements which i have is 5 so what is the value of n by 2 it is equals to 5 by 2 it is equals to i would say 2 so the output should be here equals to i believe 3 why because the frequency of 3 is equals to 3 which is greater than 2 which is equals to n by 2 right i hope it is making sense to everyone now let's get started initially i will take the candidate value as none and i will take the count value as equals to zero now i will start my array two is there i will update and the count value will be one three is there which is not equal to the present candidate that i have so now the value will be equal to zero and once it will be equal to zero i will just update with the current element that i am having three and i will update the count by plus one i will move ahead four is there which is not equal to the previous candidate again uh, again what i will do i will just make the count value as zero and once it will be equal to zero i will update the candidate with the new element which is equals to four and the count will become now one again i will move ahead here if you will observe i am having the element which is three which is not equal to the already present candidate value so again i will make the value as zero and once i will make the value as zero i need to update the candidate value with three and again the value will become one again i will move ahead here the next element the current element of this num is three now which is equal to the already present present candidate element which is equals to three so i'll just update the value of the count by two so the final candidate which is left is three right but but i'm not sure that finally this is the only majority element or not so what i will do i'll just now check the frequency of this three which is coming out to be three only which is greater than n by two so i will just finally print at it as a yes this is the overall idea behind the boyer murray voting algorithm why there is a need to final check that whether the element is greater than n by two or not 
let me try to give you the intuition of that as well for example i am taking the example number 3 here okay where suppose i will be having an element 2 3 7 3 and 4 how many elements do i have here if you will observe again 0 1 2 3 and 4 in total i am having five number of elements can i say right so what is the value of n by 2 it will be 5 by 2 it will be equals to 2 what is the frequency of the highest frequent highest frequent element it is 3 the frequency is equals to 2 which is not equal to the value of n by 2 so in this particular case i would say that there is no majority element can i say because no one is satisfying the condition of greater than n by 2 now if i will apply the same algorithm by taking the candidate value as none and by taking the i would say count value as zero what will happen two is there so i will first of all try to update the value with two the count will get, will be one three will come again it is not equal so zero will be there i'll update because now the count value is zero so same algorithm i am applying i will update the value of the candidate and the value will become one now seven is there so again the value will become zero again update will happen the value will become one 3 is there again the value is different so again it will be 0 again update will happen with 3 and value will become 1 next element it will go again it is different so it will be equal to 0 and uh, again update will happen 4 and the count will value will become 1 so here it is giving to me the candidate as 4 right now if i will count the uh, the final step as i told you is to count the frequency of the 4 so the frequency of 4 is coming out to be 1 which is not equal to the value of n by 2 so at that moment you are pretty sure that there is no majority element which is present inside your array right this is the overall idea behind this particular algorithm now what i can do is that i can try to show you the implementation of the same and uh, after that everything will be pretty much clear to you all so let me again open the jupiter notebook what i can do is i can just try to copy everything from here i'll just copy it here so here the approach is different approach number 3 using i would say boyer murray voting algorithm now what i can do here is that so let me just remove all these stuffs first of all let me take the same array what i can do i can say i can just call the function which is something called as print majority elements and here i'll just make the print majority element function there is no need actually for this as well i'll make sure that i'll print in this function itself so what i will do is that i'll try to first of all collect the candidate from a function called find candidate which i will define at the above part which will take the value nums and after that what i will do i'll just keep a check if actually it is majority element or not here i will pass this nums and the candidate where i will just keep a check that whether the value is greater than n by 2 or not whether this candidate is actually the majority element candidate or not right if yes i will just print it here itself that majority element in an array is in an array is and here i'll define simply as what is the candidate that i have right if there that is not the case in else part i can print that no majority element exists in an array perfect now i need to define this function called so this is a method definition of printing the majority element right now what i can do i can define a method definition of method definition of finding the candidate element so 
Here, what I will do is I'll define the function find candidate. Here I can find I can write the nums, which is the array name. Now what we can do inside this is that I can just try to initialize count as zero and the value of candidate as none. And as we have discussed, we will try to make one for loop. And inside that, if the value of the count will reach to zero, at that point of time, I need to update the value of the candidate with the num value, which is currently going on. If that is not the case, then what we need to do, we need to just update the value of the count with one. In what scenario? If the num is something which is equal to the candidate, Otherwise, what I want, I want to decrement the value of the count by minus one. I hope this part is pretty much clear to everyone. Now, when I will return out of this for loop, what I want to return is, I want to actually re return the candidate value. It will be done. Now, I want to check that whether this candidate value is greater than n by two or not in inside my array. For that, I need to define the method definition of is majority element or not. So what I will do, I will define the function called as is majority here, is majority here. Inside that I can pass nums and I can pass the candidate, right? Now what I will do, again I'll apply the for loop here, count is equals to zero. I can say for i, so here you can, you can just get the value of the size of the nums array. You can say for i in range, I will move until the value of the n that I have. I'll just make one condition. If the value of the nums of i is equal equal to the candidate that I'm looking for, do one thing, just do count plus one, right? Once I will be out of this for loop, I will just make a check. If the present count value is greater than n by two or not, if yes, I can simply return the value as one. Otherwise, in else case, I can simply return the value as zero. So if the value is one, what I can do, I can just simply, it will, this statement will be true. It will go inside that and print the majority element. If the value is zero, at that point of time, it will go to the else condition and will print to me that there is no as such majority element which is present inside the array. If I try to run this code, let's see. So we will be easily able to get the majority element in an array as two. I'll try to take the same example, uh, last value where we will not having any majority element, right? Two, three, seven, three, four. So let me take the, that example. So let me try to take like this. Uh, two, three, seven, three, four. So what I will do, I'll say two, three, seven, three and four. Let's see. Right, we're getting that there is no majority element present in the array. And that is what we have discussed intuitively that why is that so. Now here if you will observe, what I'm doing is that I'm applying a loop here. I'm applying a loop here. So in terms of big O, the time complexity is big O of N. But I'm not using any extra space. So the space complexity is something which is equals to big O of one, which is constant. And that's why this approach number three is quite the optimized approach as comparable to approach number two, right? I hope that this part is pretty much clear to everyone. And uh, you also fi find this particular approach, uh, this, this voting algorithm approach quite intuitive and quite interesting as well. When I uh, go through with this approach for the first time, I found it pretty amazing. And I, I am expecting the same from you as well. With this, I would like to end this particular video I'll see you all in my next upcoming video where now I'll talk about further amazing interview questions. Okay. Bye-bye everyone. See you all in my next, next upcoming video.